can be very confusing. We have so many jobs and we've been analyzing all of them the last few years to give you a clear picture and visibility about the salary, the position and the best career path to fast track your career. I'm going to give you my personal example from worst worker to supply chain director, but also the best strategy to boost your career, your salary, and you can also download your own estimation on the salary you deserve below the video. So before sharing all the numbers, our methodology, we've been working on that for the last few years. It was a very intense uh, job. And I think we're, yeah, now we are, we are ready to share it with you. We use a lot of different data sources from different countries, from different industries, uh, from uh, also our members, because we are, I'm doing this uh, career exploration in supply chain for, the, for many years now. And we have this huge database that we create with our own model, with all the inflation adjusted every year to give you the most accurate. But of course, it's all inaccurate in a way because you have so many different factors, more than 15 factors that will define the salary you deserve in your specific position. We have, this is just to give you an example of the model we've been designing, but of course, based on different criteria, such as your industry, your job description, or your skills, or maybe your country, you will have very, very different salaries based on these factors. So I'm gonna give you a few examples. For example, in the different industries, you have very different salaries. For example, if you work for a transport or freight forward company, you won't have the same salaries than if you work for the luxury pharmaceutical or defense as a supply chain manager in the US. This is more than 30% difference based on your industry. Now let's take a look on the company size. Of course, if you are the supply chain manager or director for Apple or Amazon, you won't have the same salary than if you work for a very small company in the state of Tennessee, like with only uh, 20 employees. So of course, this is a big factor. The country as well, you have up to five or six times difference between the US and Brazil or Africa. Uh, so this is a huge factor and you will be able to download your own uh, estimation below. The cities as well, even in the same country like India, which is a huge country, a beautiful country is more than 1.4 billion people. We have huge difference between small cities. I mean, 1.5 million people in Patna and Mumbai up to th times four difference for the same position as a supply chain manager. When you look at job description, you won't have the same salary for the same position. If you have management or if you don't have management, that's a big impact as well. If you have a small or big team, the diploma you have also has an impact on uh, how much you make based on if you have an associate degree, a bachelor degree, a master degree or a doctorate. To be honest, I didn't learn my job at school, but I think it's also important to have a minimum level then you have all the doors open uh, for new opportunities. Years of experience is also <laughs> very important. If you don't know anything about your job and you just started, you are 25, even in the same position, you won't do the, the same money than if you have plus 15 years experience. You have up to 60% difference in uh, Canada, for example. And if you look at India again, a lot of people from India, we have even bigger difference based on your experience you have in supply chain, logistics and procurement. Also on the same position, if you're a top performer and you deliver results every single year, you should make more than if you are just a potential. Yes, I believe in you, but you are still uh, playing a, a small and you don't deliver as much as a top performer, but we, we can believe in you. And that's why we're gonna give you maybe a little more, but not as much as a top performer in your industry. The skills you master are also very important to uh, fast track your career. For example, maybe you speak Chinese, you have a certification in Lead Six Sigma, you can automate everything with Excel and you know about Power BI or SAP. This is really good to negotiate also to become quicker a top performer. And I recommend you really after your degree to focus on the most strategic skills for your career. We're going to talk about it later. And at the end, we have multiple factors such as risk exposure. Your job is dangerous, so we're going to give you more money, many bonuses and perks taxes and of course you can also make more just by having a better negotiation with your company. So after talking all these factors you have to consider, let's go back to these supply chain roles we analyzed for you and I'm sure you are in uh, there. Let's start from the top management supply chain director. I became a supply chain director when I was 31 years old in Australia. It was a very intense job <laughs> and you can see what do you can see here. You can see uh, this is just like five countries, but you can download more than 70 countries below the video, but watch this video. This is like the local currency for every country. We use like 
like a mid mid size city, mid size company average, eight to fifteen years working. And for example, it would be someone around 35 years old, just to give you an idea. But what is really important are the percentage of difference and the career path you can follow as well. So what is the difference between a supply chain director and a supply chain manager? The difference, because I was a supply chain manager and then I became a supply chain director, but it was not the same company, it was not the same size as well. When I was a supply chain manager, I was managing the supply chain, but I had a team only of 10 people. When I became supply chain director, I had a team with many managers, around 50, 60 people. So it was not the same size. It was a more global company in, in this specific example. And of course, you have more responsibility, you have more impact. So you're gonna make more money, for example, in the US, uh, more than 180,000 US dollars, which is pretty good because you have a lot of responsibility. Usually as a supply chain director, you're gonna manage as well the logistics, so the supply chain manager could be also the demand planning manager. We're going to get back to this. You have the logistics and transport with the logistics direct director and also the import export. We do have also the client relation director. It's not necessarily part of the supply chain. I was leading uh, the customer service team uh, in supply chain, but sometimes it's not part of it. It really depends on your uh, company and industry. And we do have also sometimes the procurement part of the supply chain team. Sometimes it separates. It depends once again on the core business of your company. If your company is more focusing on distribution, usually the procurement is part of the supply chain. Or if it's like your company is buying a lot of raw materials, for example, oil and gas, you will have a separate team focusing on uh, only procurement and sourcing. There is no good or bad. <laughs> this is really the way you structure, but at the end, supply chain and procurement has to be very close each other because at the end you want to improve the service, the cost and the cash of the company. So I was leading the procurement as a director, but sometimes it's separate and the salaries for this both position are really good. And finally, you have the program and project directors. This is the transformation team. They will lead projects internally or externally with consultants to transform the company. I was part of these jobs and it's, they're also very strategic for your career. Okay, so now we have a clear picture of all the supply chain top management. I wish you uh, to be part of it one day if this is really what you want. <laughs> and now let's go back into more details about every single department to see what are the career paths and the salaries for uh, these uh, different topics. So first of all, let's talk about the logistics um, director. And you can see we talked about it before and below the director you have the warehousing with one warehouse director it could be a big network of 40 or 50 warehouse like i was uh, managing before or it could be uh, just one you have a transport director it could be like air freight uh, like trucks sea freight and we have the import export team managers so we have these three position and i recommend if you want to become a logistic director to have experience in warehousing transport and import export okay so now let's go back to warehouse we uh, do have a lot of people working in the warehouse for us 100 millions of people all around the world and if you want to become a warehouse director it starts from the beginning and i when i was very young i was 21 years old i was working as a warehouse worker this is the, the entry level in uh, the, the warehouse, then what you can do, keep in mind, specialize. Specialize, for example, specialized underling, or maybe you have a permit for a forklift, or you can manage very expensive or very dangerous product. The more you will specialize, the more you will make money. It sometimes it's only one week permit to get just 20% more money, uh, which can be very efficient for you and for your family. You can also become the team leader of your of your warehouse worker. This is the classic pass in the warehouse. You do have a lot of competition as well, so you have to prove that you are very efficient. There is another pass ar around what we call logistics coordinator. So it's all about coordination and planning inside and outside the warehouse. It's more around data and planning, which is also a very strategic for the next jobs you want to do if you want to leave the warehouse and also inventory manager. So you're gonna manage the volume of inventory, the safety stock, the replenishment inside your warehouse. This is also very strategic if you want at one point to move to, for example, demand planning position later. Then you can become, if it's a big warehouse service manager, whatever you have uh, from team leader to or from a coordination role. And then you can become the operation manager uh, the operations manager is really like the, the backup of the warehouse director. He's going to lead all the operations 
and one day because you're a top performer you become the warehouse director of this specific warehouse so you can see you have many many options you can pause this video to see all the numbers but at the end you have multiple ways to move from warehouse worker to the top of the warehouse in your company so as you can see there is a lot of information you can pause this video but at the end look at more the percentage and uh, all these career paths that you can have inside the warehouse I recommend to focus at one point on coordination and planning and data if you want to open new doors before becoming warehouse director and maybe one day logistics director in your company. Okay, so now let's talk about transport very quickly. You have the transport director and below that you have a driver. First of all, it could be a driver, it could be uh, someone uh, driving a boat. Uh, you, you can also specialize like in the warehouse, specialize, for example, it could be like bigger truck or coal products or dangerous products or very expensive products but the more you will specialize the more you will make money because uh, you have less competition on that you can also become a freight forwarder it's not easy to move from driver to freight forwarder i recommend you to maybe do a degree or like any form of education to manage all the coordination of the the international transport and then you can become transport manager before becoming the transport director of your company. To be honest, it's not easy to move from transport director to logistic director. Why? Because you need to have some experience in warehouse as well and even import export. So I recommend to have multiple expertise if you want to open new doors for you once you reach this specific position. Then we do have import export. You have the import export team manager. It could be also a director if it's a really big company. And it starts from becoming an assistant in this uh, field then you can become an import manager. So on one side you have importation, on the other side you have exportation. You make a little bit more money as export manager than import manager, so keep this in mind. <laughs> and you also have the custom manager, more specialized with more legal and a lot of paperwork to make sure that you respect all the regulation to uh, get your products out of the custom. So that's also a good career option and you can see once you get becoming the manager, you can make more money and maybe one day becoming as well logistics director. Now let's talk about client relations. I told you before I was managing the client service manager in my team. If it's a really big team, you can become the client relation director. It's uh, like having 10, 100, 1000 of people managing the relationship. It's not necessarily part of supply chain. We always start with client officer or something like equivalent. Then you can become client supervisor. On the other side, you have the client master data. So you have people managing the data for the clients. You also have a, a tool called CRM, Customer Relationship Manager, to make sure that you have the right data for your customers, very close to IT. You can become a sales administration manager before becoming the manager of the full service. So keep in mind, you have many options. Always the data part is very, very interesting. You can also make a little more money if you want to go to a different career paths. After this job, you can move towards analytics and coordination in supply chain and demand planning. No procurement. So procurement, as explained before, is part of the supply chain, is leading or is led by the supply chain director. And the job below that is procurement manager. If it's a very big company, you will have multiple product procurement manager based on, for example, industries or fields or group of products or category. Below that, you have the purchasing assistant. It is the entry point. Then you do have the supplier data management. So you have the assistant on one side and the, the data on the other side, which is the, really the, the, the beginning of the journey in procurement. Then you can, for example, you have many examples. You can become a buyer for transport and logistics. You can become a, a project buyer if you are focusing on very specific projects, for example, construction projects. And you can becoming a raw material buyer. This is a bit more paid. Why? Because you have like raw material can be uh, very <laughs> uncertain and we uh, you, you become kind of a trader with all the uncertainty and the volatility on the market. So you have much more volatility and finance when you become a raw material buyer. What, that's why you make a bit more money uh, in this uh, position before becoming procurement manager, maybe director in uh, procurement. Once again, make a pause in this video if I'm going too fast because now we're moving to demand planning, which is one of the most confusing ones, <laughs> to be honest. Demand planning, I did first small business and then big business because it's, it can be uh, complex. So in a small business, you have a supply chain manager, you don't have a supply chain director. Okay, so the supply chain manager, I was a supply chain manager, I was reporting to the operation director 
or directly to the CEO. Okay, that's the way it works usually. What is the first job? You, usually you have a supply chain or you have few supply chain coordinators in the company to make sure that everything is uh, coordinated with the planning and the trucks and the customers and the inventory. You can become a supply chain analyst. These people, they will analyze what's going on in the company and they will do recommendation uh, to optimize the inventory, the forecast, the planning. And it is a very good uh, moving from coordination to analyst is something very imp important and strategic for your career. Then you have the demand planner. The demand planner will really focus on the forecast. This is a very trendy job <laughs> all around the planet. And this person understands the data and can make prediction to improve the investment, the cost, the inventory and the service of the client. So I recommend <laughs> to focus on this direction because this is a forecasting, mastering forecast and having analytics in your in your background can be a super powerful to uh, fast track your career. And after that, you can become the supply chain manager. So that was for a small business. In a bigger company, it's more complex. In a bigger company, on one side, you have what we call the planning and the coordination. We start with the same supply chain coordinator. You're going to make probably a bit more money if it's a very big company, for example. Then you can become a supply planner. So it's more advanced than coordination. You're going to do more long-term planning with your suppliers, with your contractors, with logistics, not only the week planning, but more advanced and strategic planning for the from the production to the distribution. And then you can become supply planning manager. You're going to manage a team of supply plan. Okay, so that's more the planning side of the company. On the other side, you have the analytic and more, I will say, data and forecasting side. You can become a supply chain analyst, which is a very good uh, start. Then you can become an inventory management expert. I became an inventory management expert, not only for one warehouse like before, but my job was to optimize the level of inventory for 2000 stores and 50 warehouses all around the world. So having these kind of skills can be very profitable for your company, but also for your salary. So keep in mind, inventory management expert is very trendy, especially right now with the, the cost of cash all around the world. Then we go back to demand planning. So demand planning is very close to inventory management. My demand planning team was also inventory management expert. They were doing both demand planning and uh, inventory management, but sometimes we split this position. The inventory management expert will use the forecast to manage the inventory. And at the end, we have the combination of planning on one side and demand and analytic inventory on the other side to have the demand planning manager in your company. Usually the demand planning manager will report to the supply chain director. And then in big companies, usually you have an SNOP manager, sales and operation planning manager. And his position is to become a facilitator to align all the company into one number, especially for forecasting and inventory. For example, for the planning of new products, for promotions. This is a very important job, usually when you have a lot of silos in the company and it's you need to agree on an SNP process, you need to have collaboration between departments. And if you want to become a supply chain director, this is a good path to move from demand planning manager or demand planner to SNOP manager. Just keep in mind as well, the supply chain director is also managing the, the transport, the purchasing, the import export, the client relation and the logistics. And if you are a supply chain manager, you're not managing directors, but you're just managing one or two people in every uh, department. So that's it for the clear picture of demand planning. Make a pause one more time. Focus all on planning or on demand. You will make more money if you focus on inventory management and demand, but it's a good combination to have these two. In my specific team, I like to even combine planning and demand and to make the planning as automatic as possible that my team can really focus from the production to the distribution and have an holistic approach of the supply chain. So that's it. Now you have a better picture of what's happening in demand planning. You have many different names. I didn't use all of them. It can be very confusing, but at the end, on one side, you have the planning and the coordination. And on the other side, you have all the demand, the forecasting and inventory management. I recommend to focus more on demand and uh, analytics if you want to fast track your salary and career. And for example, in my team, the demand planner was also taking care of the planning. I tried to make the planning as automatic as possible. Then we can really focus the value on forecasting and helping our customers to have a better service.
So to conclude before talking about how to fast track your career and career paths, we have the projects and consulting. You have the program director. If you have a big group, you have a big transformation project. For example, you are moving to a new ERP system and you can start as a transport project manager. For example, then you can become a logistics project manager, which is more than transportation. Then you can become a supply chain project manager. And myself, I became logistics project manager, then supply chain project manager, which was more holistic before uh, moving into a program direction. You have also many jobs as a consultant. The salary can vary a lot based on your technical skills, the size of your projects and also your experience and how you can transform your company. You can also become an IT project manager. It's very strategic to master all the IT tools. And if you have supply chain and IT today, it's super trendy <laughs> to fast track your career. And also data analysts and data scientists. We talk a lot about this job with AI and with machine learning. And if you want to go to the next step, become as well a data science and AI engineer. You can see that the salaries are super high and we have this trend in uh, big companies and tech companies that experts make more money than their manager because they have the true expertise uh, to transform and automate all the company with their technical skills. Okay, so now we talk about a lot of jobs, uh, how to fast track your career, to fast track your salary. No one will do it for you. This is your own responsibility. I'm going to show you a slow career path and a fast career path and how to uh, boost your career. For example, if you were a logistic coordinator and you just wait, realize on company's promotion, very uh, patient. Maybe you become a supply chain coordinator in your 30s, only plus 20, 30% then the supply chain analyst, and maybe at the end of your career, you will become a service manager. This is a slow career path. No, this is a fast track career path. You start with the same position as the logistic coordinator or supply coordinator. Then you become an expert in forecasting and inventory management, and you become demand planner plus 50%. Then you become SNOP manager. You become the facilitator of your company, SNOP manager. And at the end, you become the supply chain director and you multiply your salary from the beginning from five to 10, which is a completely different life, uh, to be honest. And that was something similar to my uh, career. So keep in mind, you have to be proactive. You have to be very specific. What do you want? What are the, the best career paths? What are the skills you are looking for? If you really want to change your positions, who have more responsibility in, the, in terms of teams, but also in terms of volumes and revenue, you're going to manage with your own position. So my advice to have a proactive career path, you have two ways. You have the management way. You have more responsibility from team manager to department to business unit to C level. And this will be uh, driven by your results and your capability to lead and uh, help and support your team. On the other side, you have the expertise um, that will really drive you and help you to make much more money as well from technical leader to domain expert, company expert and recognized industry expert. This will be driven by skills, having the most strategic skills that will really uh, boost your career and your performance. To be honest, I feel I'm part of the recognized industry expert because thanks to my YouTube channel, my blog and my school. And I was really focusing on the skills and the performance all along my uh, career. However, you don't have to become a manager to make more money. You can also become an expert. And we have this trend coming from the tech companies. And in the tech companies, we have many experts in AI, in data science, in cloud uh, architecture. We have many people, they make more than their manager because they have the most strategic skills. And these technical skills can really like transform the company. And that's why they get more money. So don't get pushed and stressed by, oh, I need to become a manager. This is really moving a lot. And also you won't have the same pressure because as a manager, you have to lead the team and also absorb a lot of stress in your, in your, in your company. So you have to decide what do you prefer. Just to conclude, I just want to give you a few uh, proactive career paths. For example, you have uh, Leah, she's a log logistic coordinator. And at one point, yeah, she moved to uh, import manager, but I can tell you logistics, import, export and transport can be very, very competitive because you have a lot of competition and three uh, third party logistics players. So at one point, she decided to move back to more uh, analytic jobs. So she became a supply chain analyst. Then she learned about forecasting and inventory and she became demand planner. And then after that, she became a logistics project manager. 
uh, transforming the company more like with um, more automation and simplification. After that, she was focusing more on supply chain projects, such as improving the forecasting process, <laughs> for example, before becoming a supply chain manager because she had uh, she had a mul multiple experience in data, in uh, management, in analytics. And after a few years as a supply chain manager, she became the supply chain director. So that's a very good example. You have multiple ways on career paths. You have to find your own way. And just to give you my career path, I started as a warehouse worker. I had no idea what to do with my life, to be honest. I just, I just like supply chain because I was good with numbers. And yeah, for me, it was quite easy and natural to go to this direction. I, I focused first on inventory management, first in the factory, then in a warehouse. Then I became kind of a supply chain analyst before becoming kind of data scientist. It was not called like this at this time. It was in 2009 and I was basically running data models with more than 10 computers working with the MIT in the US. So I, I didn't have the title to be honest, but it was, it was kind of the beginning of this job. Then I became a supply chain logistics project manager first. Then an inventory management expert and my job was to automate the replenishment of 2000 stores. Then I did the same for, for warehouse. Then I started to uh, dive into a uh, demand planning uh, before becoming supply chain project manager to automate the job of all the demand planners and all the uh, inventory management. I moved to Brazil as a supply chain manager and project leader before moving to Australia uh, as an SNOP manager and demand planning manager before being promoted as a supply chain director. So that was a long journey with a lot of uh, movement and different countries. But at the end, I always focused on, uh, I feel the most strategic skills regarding data analytics, demand inventory management, but you will have to find your own way as well uh, in your career. And if I go back to myself, I was a supply chain director, but I was not I was not fully enjoying this position. For me, my drive was more around education. So first of all, I became a consultant. I studied ABC Supply Chain, the online school for supply chain expert and leader before becoming an instructor myself and an entrepreneur. And let's see, I'm very curious about my future the next 10 or 20 years. I'm very open to it. My conclusion by giving you my example is not only about the money. For me, you need to have a right balance between the value you give to your company and the value you receive, but also how you enjoy what you are doing. And if you don't enjoy, I didn't really enjoy becoming a director with a lot of responsibilities. I'm more like myself. I'm more a teacher, a guide, a coach for people. <laughs> and that's what I really like to do. And at, at one point, you will have to find the right balance between the value you give, the value you receive, having the right skills to negotiate and bring more value to the co company but also really doing something that, okay, when you wake up in the morning, you are super happy to go to work and you ju just don't do it only for the money. So at the end, you have to find your place in the, this world with the right job and the right salary. And if you want to know what salary do you deserve, you have a link below and we're going to tell you based on a few questions, how much do you deserve in your specific position, but also in the next one. So uh, click on the link below and also let us know if you have any comment or questions about the career paths, about the salary. We are super curious to know uh, how we can also help you and give you more clarity. This is one of my purpose with ABC Supply Chain is to give you the right tools and methods and clarity with the best strategy to really fully enjoy what you do <laughs> in your supply chain uh, jobs. So thank you for watching us. If you want to know more about, we have a lot of tools, methods, most of them free to fast track your careers and your skills and we'll be super happy to support you. Don't forget to like and I see you for another episode.